So in order to uh, measure angles on a Ceph tracing, you will use a protractor and each protractor has two sides. So you can start measuring the angle from this side. So you see the zero is here and continues to go up to 90 and then up to 180. Or if you're measuring from this side, then the zero is on, on this side and the 180 is on this side. And you have to pay attention to the direction as you measure. So to start, you want to place the center of a protractor in the center of the angle you're measuring. And you want, you want to make sure that this line aligns with your first line. And then this line aligns with the other line that you're trying to, of the angle that you're trying to measure. So in this case, let's say this is SN line and this is NA line. So I'm trying to measure SNA angle. I place my protractor on endpoint, make sure it lines up with the SN line, and then the other side. You don't even have to use this, but since it's there, we might as well use it. You align this one with NA. So when you align this one with NA, I can see that this is a little bit less than 80. It is 77 and a half degrees. If you're moving from SNA to SNB, you don't even have to move the protractor because the center point is still the same. The angle is still the same. All you have to do is change from NA to NB by uh, rotating this part. So now I'm measuring SNB angle and it's about 70 degrees. When it comes to A and B angle, you don't really have to measure it because many times it is small and it's kind of difficult to measure. What you can do is calculate A and B angle by subtracting SMB from SNA. So it's SNA minus SMB equals A and B. Now, sometimes we try to measure angles between horizontal lines. A good example is when you're trying to measure the angle between SN line and mandibular plane and I remove the tracing here for ease of visualization now if the lines cross or intersect it's easy to find where you place your protractor however if the lines do not intersect or do not meet or maybe they're far away from each other or they will meet somewhere really outside the uh, sheet of paper then what you do is you take advantage of these parallel lines that are on your orthodontic protractor. So instead of having this line be here and measuring the angle at the intersection, what you want to do is use these parallel lines. It's as if you have transferred this line to this line. Since this is parallel to this, then the angle between this and the protractor is the same as the angle between this line and the protractor. So you would align whatever line fits and then you slide your protractor until the center of the protractor hits NA line, SN line. So my the bottom of my protractor is on mandibular plane and the top is sliding until, now this is at SN one of the parallel lines, it doesn't have to be this one, it depends on the Ceph. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's even the edge of the uh, protractor. And this is at the SN line. Now what I can do is measure the angle by looking at the protractor, either by moving this guy here, or by just directly looking at the protractor and, and visualizing where the line is at the protractor and in this case we're starting from this side so 0 10 20 it is about uh, 23 degrees another way to achieve um, transferring this line closer to sn is by redrawing it so i would just use any of these parallel lines make sure it's lining up with mandibular plane in this example and then I would make a new line that intersects with SN. And basically this is parallel to mandibular plane. So whatever angle I measure between this new line and SN, 
will be equal to the angle between SN and mandibular plane. So I just what I did is I used these parallel lines to transfer mandibular plane. Instead of being this far away from SN, I moved it all the way so that it would intersect SN. And now I can measure this angle. The same uh, method that we used with the orthodontic protractor can be used with the normal uh, geometric protractor. You align the center of the protractor with the intersection of the two lines that you're trying to measure the angle between. So for example, I'm trying to measure the angle between mandibular plane and this vertical line. So I'm trying to measure this angle. So if I'm measuring this angle, I have to start reading the protractor from, from this angle. In this one, the zero happens to be here. So I'm gonna read it this way. So if you look at it closely, it's very close to 90 degrees, okay? But it's not quite 90 degrees. And if you really zoom in on it, it's about 88 degrees. So this is how you read it. At the same time, if you read it from the wrong direction, if I say this is 92 degrees, then I have measured this angle rather than this angle. So we have to pay attention to the direction of the angle. And if you do make the mistake of measuring the, the, the other side of the angle, you can always subtract subtract from 180 and you get the correct one.